It seems like almost every other day, a new skateboarding product is coming out. Whether it be a new gadget that's meant to be a skateboard accessory or a complete redesign of the skateboard itself, people are constantly trying to invent new skateboarding related products and let's just say that they don't all turn out great. In this video, we're going to go over the worst skateboarding inventions. Now, it is good that people are trying to think of new ways to improve skateboarding, so you have to give people props for creativity, but that doesn't change the fact that tons of skateboarding products just don't make a lot of sense. I'm sure there's plenty that I missed, so if I left out any good ones, go ahead and leave it in the comments, do me a favor and leave a like on the video, check out the links in the description, and with that said, let's get right into it. Actually, before we do, I want to thank Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. Every box has around $70 in value, but only costs $45. 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small businesses, many of which are based right here in the US. With Bespoke, you only pay for what you want. You'll get a box assigned to you each month based on a quiz you take when signing up, and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside so you can choose to one, keep it, two, swap it out for a different box or offer, or three, skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. I got the forage box, which came with a really well-made knife. I got the retreat box, which came with a cool travel hammock and blanket. And I also got the grounds box, which came with a knife, carabiner, reties, and an inflatable seat. The next box I want to get is the flip box, which comes with a knife made out of recycled skateboards. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter code SKATEBOX20 at checkout. And now, let's get into the video. To start off with, we have skateboard paddles. Skateboard paddles are designed to be used as an alternative way to get speed on a skateboard, as well as an alternative way to slow down. The main issue with these is that they're basically an overpriced stick that's designed to do something that you can easily do with your legs. Skateboard paddles can cost well over $100, which is a bit much considering how simple they are and how easily you could get by without them. I feel like the target market of these are people who are just starting to learn how to ride a skateboard and these companies convince them that paddles make it easier when in reality, they're only trying to upsell a product that's mostly unnecessary. The only appeal that I can see to skateboard paddles is that they can probably help stand up paddleboarders practice on land, but from the perspective of skateboarding, it seems like a pretty useless and overpriced accessory. If you ask me, this is definitely one of the worst skateboarding inventions you can spend your money on, but if by some chance you think there's something that's even worse, then definitely let me know in the comments. Number two on the list are rubber shoe covers. People have been trying to figure out ways to make skate shoes last longer pretty much since skateboarding first took off in the 60s, and these rubber shoe covers are just another attempt at solving that problem. The idea is that instead of constantly wearing down your skate shoes, you can buy this rubber outsole that stretches over it that gets worn down instead. I haven't tried these myself, but there's a few videos where people test them out, and the general consensus seems to be that they actually do work to a certain extent. People say that they grip pretty well, and they do a decent job at protecting your shoe, which is exactly what they're designed to do. With that said, they do have some drawbacks as well. First, we all know that style is crucial in skateboarding, and having a rubber sleeve on your shoe isn't exactly the best look. Also, every video that I could find made it seem like they were extremely hard to put on, even for two people. This isn't exactly practical since you'll either struggle to put them on every time you skate, or you have to leave them on your shoes at all times, which again, isn't the best from a style perspective. All of that aside, the primary dilemma with them is the price. As of now, it's about $25 for a set, which is almost the same price as a new pair of skate shoes, so I don't see how it's really worth it. You can't even find a review where someone skated them for more than an hour, which makes it hard to tell how long they actually last, so it's tough to justify paying that much when a tube of shoe goo only costs around $10 and will last you for months. When it comes to these shoe covers, if they lowered the price and made them blend in with the shoe better and had some proof that they can hold up, then it might not be terrible, but as of now, it seems like a waste of money. For number three, we have the ripstick. Ripsticks were invented sometime in the early 2000s and they got popular pretty fast. They were a fun to ride toy that looked like a skateboard but wasn't as difficult, which definitely appealed to a lot of kids. The problem is, they try to make it seem like ripsticks were just like skateboarding, but any real skateboarder will tell you that riding a skateboard feels completely different from riding a ripstick. 
it was kind of the same old bait and switch tactic that a lot of companies use where they try to compare something to skateboarding to make it seem cool when in reality it's completely different not only that, but ripsticks are much more limited in terms of what you can do with it. So if someone is interested in putting their effort into learning tricks, it'd be way better for them to learn how to skate. These days, there's a ton of ripstick options, some of which cost several hundred dollars, but for the most part, they're still cheaply made and they break pretty easily. Again, they can be a fun toy for kids to play with, but they're definitely overpriced and it's really not like skateboarding at all. So moving on, we have the rock deflector. This is a prime example of a skateboarding product being created with good intentions, but not really panning out. Rock deflectors are a piece of plastic designed to act as a shield that goes on the front truck of a skateboard to help prevent rocks from getting under the wheels. Most skaters would agree that stop rocks are annoying to deal with, so attempting to solve this problem is definitely a noble cause. Unfortunately, the only time skateboarders really hit rocks is when they're too small to see, and the rock shield mostly only works on bigger rocks that are a lot easier for people to avoid. The shield also makes it almost impossible to do certain tricks, so it takes away a lot of your board's functionality. It could potentially work for someone who only uses a skateboard to commute, but for people who want to do tricks on their board, it just doesn't really make sense. Up next, we have suspension trucks. Suspension trucks take a different approach to the classic design of trucks by redesigning the base plate. According to their website, they're supposed to give you more pop, an increase in speed, less impact, and better control, which are some pretty bold claims to make. If all of those things were true, then they might not be too bad, but from my limited experience, most of those claims are exaggerated. I haven't skated suspension trucks for an extended amount of time, but I have tried out a friend's board who had them on, and I didn't personally notice that much of a difference. I do think they go slightly faster since they absorb the feedback from small bumps and cracks, but I definitely didn't notice a difference in pop or control, which mostly seems like a sales tactic. That alone isn't too big of a deal, but on top of their exaggerated marketing, the trucks also have a decent amount of flaws. Just to name a few of them, they're kind of high on the price spectrum, they're definitely on the heavy side, the base plate doesn't slide as well as other trucks, and the design of the base plate makes it hard to tighten the bolts. Suspension trucks might not be the absolute worst skateboarding invention, but they are a little gimmicky, and unless you're building a cruiser board, you're most likely better off with a normal set of trucks. Next up, we have the bow board. The bow board is similar to a scooter, except instead of just pushing with your foot, you can also bounce up and down to make it go forward. They tried to market it as a good way to exercise as well as a mode of transportation, but realistically, there's much better and easier ways to do both of those things. This is definitely one of the weirder skateboard inventions, and for whatever reason, it was never really that popular. This could be because it cost over $300 or because it looked kind of odd to see someone ride one, but for whatever reason, they just never really caught on. Next on the list, we have the Rip Surf. Now, as if regular ripsticks weren't already bad enough, someone got the bright idea to take it and convert it into a surfboard. Basically, just as the popularity of normal ripsticks was starting to die down, people started making the surfboard ripsticks, which is essentially adding a gimmick on top of a gimmick. I understand that it's just a toy and it's not meant to be a skateboard, but that's not really the problem with it. Aside from the way it looks and the price of it and the overall quality, the main issue with it is that they say it's the closest thing to surfing on land, but realistically, they make surf skateboards that are much more similar to actual surfing. Just like they tried to compare the rip stick to skateboarding, they also tried to compare the rip surf to surfing, even though they're completely different. It might be a fun toy to mess around on, and it isn't the most expensive, but if someone is looking for a skateboard that mimics surfing, then there's plenty of better options out there. So next up, we have the morph board. A morph board is a 4-in-1 skateboard combo that allows you to convert it into some sort of bouncing board, a skateboard, a balance board, or a scooter. Unfortunately, it's pretty much a mediocre version of all of the above. First, when it comes to the skateboard, it's pretty heavy compared to the average board, it's made almost entirely of plastic, and it also has a really weird shape. Then, as a scooter, it's still really heavy by most standards, it's still made of plastic, and you can't even turn the handlebars. As for the bouncing attachment, it looks like something that even a little kid would get bored of fairly quickly, because let's be honest, there's really not a whole lot you can do with it. The one thing it does seem useful as is a balance board, but even then, it's still really overpriced, especially for the quality. 
The board alone sells for around $20 and every attachment set costs about $40 each. I wish I could say that it at least helps open the door to skateboarding for kids, but honestly, they'd be much better off getting a penny board or something, that way they at least get their money's worth. Up next we have the summer board. There's plenty of weird skateboarding inventions out there, but this one definitely deserves some creativity points. Basically, the summer board is a six-wheeled electric skateboard that's designed to mimic snowboarding. The board has two caster wheels in the center that are slightly higher than the other four wheels, which makes it maneuver just like a snowboard on concrete. Now, to be fair, this actually isn't a terrible invention, but there are a couple of downsides. Even though it's probably a lot of fun, depending on who you ask, it does look pretty weird. That's not the biggest deal though, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who can get past the look of it. The thing that people can't get past though is the price. These boards can cost anywhere from $1,500 all the way up to $2,000 or more. A lot of people could probably get past how weird it looks, but you could literally buy a used car for the same price, which is kind of crazy, even for an electric skateboard. Next, we have hoverboards, which are arguably one of the worst inventions of all time. Even though hoverboards might not seem skateboarding related, when they first got popular, a lot of people brought them to skate parks, so it's definitely worth mentioning. For those of you who don't know, hoverboards came out around 2015, and it didn't take long for them to start blowing up, both figuratively and literally. They became a really popular trend, and it got to the point where rappers were even buying tricked out hoverboards, but things died down pretty fast when some of the cheaper ones started catching on fire, and nowadays, you don't really see them that much anymore. Aside from infesting skate parks for months, these things cost hundreds, sometimes even thousands of dollars, and they've literally burned down people's houses, so they've definitely earned their spot on this list. I'm not trying to hate on random inventions for no reason, because I realize a lot of time and effort goes into building something, but it's a shame to see skateboarders waste their money on gimmicky products when they could be buying good quality skate gear instead. If you feel like I left anything out, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Before you click away, do me a favor and leave a like on the video, check out the links in the description, and with that said, thanks for watching.